We're here at Augusta Health with Meg Schrader. She is the breast health navigator here at Augusta Health. We're in the waiting area where people would come mm -hmm. to have their mammograms. And I have to say, it's so quiet. The colors are just so soothing. And so for a stressful thing, mm -hmm. this really is a de-stressor. Thank you. We worked really hard on that because we know it really is a stressful situation. So we tried to pick colors and color schemes and just low lighting and all of those things to just really make it a calm environment because we know it's a really stressful time and we want to make the experience as visually pleasant as we can. Well, you guys did a great job. Thank Let's you. go into the mammography area and okay. talk about mammograms. Great. So Meg, we're in one of the exam rooms mm -hmm. where uh, mammography is done and you know one of the things that uh, I think about is I was in the gym the other day, mm -hmm. a woman had obviously just had a mammogram and she was called back to have another mammogram mm -hmm. and it obviously wasn't the first time that it happened. She was so anxiety ridden that she was like, I'm ready to just not do this yeah. anymore. Yeah. Tell me what people can possibly do to avoid that kind of situation. I think the biggest thing is your expectations. Um, mammograms are very anxiety provoking and when you get a call back for either special views or a diagnostic mammogram, women always jump to, jump to the conclusion that it's going to be cancer and that is not the case. You know, a screening is just that. We screen the breast. What happens with either a special views or diagnostic is either the radiologist has seen something that, you know, they just want to get a closer look at. So when they come in for a diagnostic diagnostic or special views, we may be doing additional things. We may be using different paddles. We may be focusing in on just one very small area of the breast. The radiologist will actually read the mammography images while they're here and may, uh, may order additional images so that hopefully what's going to happen is by the time we're done with the, with the woman or the man that they will have, they'll know what's going on and they'll know what their next step is. And that may be everything from we'll see you again in six months to to everything looks fine, we'll see you again in a year. Um, you know, there may be something that we might want to biopsy, um, but again, it doesn't mean that it's cancerous. It is very anxiety provoking. I mean, it's very fearful, but what we try to do is decrease that amount of time between the screening and the diagnostic and then giving them an answer to at least what are, what are the next steps gonna be. So perhaps if someone's had that happen a couple mm -hmm. of times, mm -hmm. they might want their referring physician to at least check on ha ordering a diagnostic mammogram. Yes, yes. and that's the, one of the things is if they've had that a couple of times, if they've had biopsies, a lot of times if a woman's or a man's had a biopsy, they'll want to re-look at that area in six months. And you know, we often think of breasts as, as a pair, but they actually are considered individual as far as radiology is concerned. So that's one of the things that they have to look at. And there really has to be a reason to do a diagnostic mammogram because insurance, to be perfectly honest, insurance won't pay for them unless there is a reason. But I think the radiologists and the referring physicians work very hard to get the appropriate test um, the first time. So if it is something where they've had a couple of diagnostics, they may need to do that. But then once things are stable, then they can go back to doing screening. But again, that's kind of anxiety provoking as well because they're used to having that diagnostic and having that immediate feedback. And one thing that we always want to cover when we're talking mm -hmm. with you is give us the ages and when people should be getting screened mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. frequently because there's been a lot of uh, yeah. media yeah. Th that confuses that issue. Absolutely. What is the recommendation? The recommendation still is to start at 40 um, with annual mammograms. You know, a couple years ago the United States Preventive Task Force said, well, we need to, you know, we need to start at 50, but really none of the guidelines changed. The insurance companies didn't change theirs, the Medicare guidelines haven't changed, so it still it still is for asymptomatic women to start at age 40 and to have annual mammograms. I get a lot of times people will say, well, when should I stop having mammograms? Well, I think it really depends. It depends on, you know, that's a really great discussion to have with your provider of, you know, when do I stop? You know, I have 90 year olds that are, are rocking and still are, you know, in great health and would be prepared to do something. On the converse, I have, you know, some people that are in their 50s that have lots of other really significant health problems that really, you know, should they stop? still be having mammograms, but that's a that's a conversation to have with your health care provider, and it's a great one to have. Um, but you know, the preventive task force said stop at 74, but you know, the guidelines haven't changed. Even though we've had a lot of, you know, a lot of things in the media, they really haven't. It's still, still start at 40. 
any new things on the horizon that I haven't asked you about that you're seeing or any anything out there that you want to talk about? You know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, still get your screening mammogram clinical breast exams, um, examining, you know, there's been a lot of controversy as well about self-breast exams. You know, is everybody great about doing them every month? But you need to know your, the landscape of your breasts. And I think that's the biggest thing. And having the clinical breast exam and the, and the mammogram, it's all part of good Annual. breast health. Annually, yes. And that's all part of good breast health. You know, we're seeing more um, information that's starting to come out about lifestyle changes, about alcohol intake. So there's a lot of studies that are going on that I think we're going to have, you know, some really kind of definitive answers of, you know, what is the best thing we can do to prevent? And a lot of it is being being active and a good diet. A well Very good. Diet. Thank you. Mammograms are really important. The earlier we can detect something, the more treatment options we have. It's so convenient at Augusta Health between Women's Imaging and the new Outpatient Center on Statler Boulevard. It's amazing how many people will come up to me and they'll say, you know, I had my mammogram at Women's Imaging and those girls were wonderful. They're passionate about what they do, they're compassionate, and they really are, you know, they love their patients. Augusta Health, proudly serving our community as one of the nation's top 100 hospitals.